This video shows the assembly and use of a Louisville Slugger Blue Flame Pitching Machine I purchased in 2014 for $183 including shipping from Amazon to help my 10 year old grandson with his batting practice. It arrived in a cardboard box about 1 foot by 1 foot by 4 foot long and weighed about 30 pounds. When I opened it up, I discovered that it was actually triple boxed for pretty much the ultimate in shipping protection. Unpacked, there are five major pieces and just a few small ones. It would seem that the bolts you need to assemble uh, the units together are already in place on the units. You need to uh, undo them, put the uh, pieces together, and then redo them. It appears to come with a set of uh, building instructions and not one but two instruction sheets on how to use it. Uh, all they say you need is a wrench and a Phillips screwdriver to, uh, driver to assemble it. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, oh yeah, the sheet metal, the metal it's used to make it, appears to be very thick, very heavy weight. Uh, this is not a flimsy uh, design by any means. Something I noticed about the instructions that was very nice is that although the unit is manufactured in Taiwan, all of the instructions appear to be in very clear, well-translated English. It doesn't have a lot of the uh, translation errors that are common for items made in Asia. Step one was to remove the large hand screw from the base assembly and use it to attach the front leg assembly. To attach the throwing arm to the base, you remove the two 9 16 bolts, position the throwing arm over the holes, then reinsert the bolts. What's interesting is that there are two lock nuts that hold the bottom of these bolts, but the frame is also threaded for the bolts, so that you thread the bolts into the frame, tighten them, and then tighten the lock nuts onto the bolts a second time. So this thing is very secure. It's not going to go anything anywhere soon. Next, remove the bolt from the release arm Pass it through the base holder here. Put, uh, align the uh, release arm with the holes and then tighten the nut down. Um, this should be snug, but loose enough to allow back and forth motion. Next, use a Phillips screwdriver to attach the uh, ball shield. Next, using the thumb screws provided, attach the micro adjustment and the release arm block. The next step is supposed to be to attach, attach two uh, securing spikes to the front leg assembly. The idea is these dig into the dirt and help hold the machine in place. I am not impressed with these because if you look they're only about an inch and a half long and most practice fields, uh, baseball diamonds, have fairly loose dirt on them and I'm not thinking this is going to hold very well. The last step is to use a, the provided cotter pin to attach the spring to the rotating the uh, pivot arm of the base plate. That assembly was extremely easy. I'd say having never done a, a ball machine before it took me less than 10 minutes to assemble this. Uh, so the instructions were very clear and assembly was very easy. Okay, we're out in the field. The first thing I notice is, as I thought, the, the little spikes they give you to anchor uh, the machine to the ground are woefully inadequate. However, I found the nine inch camping stakes you can get uh, very cheaply from Walmart or almost anywhere. Uh, do a really good job. They anchor it 
And that's important because a half inch movement in the back end can cause the ball to be off one way or the other by as much as 10 inches. Another thing I found is that when set for four, full power at uh, power level 11, which is supposed to be about 44 miles an hour with a softball, it takes a lot of force to get the spring down. This is something for a, a high school student or an adult to do. A little leaguer could probably not get enough force to hold that down. Anyways, once that's down, you pull this back smoothly for an even release. I found that for an average little league batter's height, that is their strike zone, on a 42 foot diamond, that is distance from the uh, uh, pitcher's mound to the uh, home plate, the best setting for power level 11 is for the micro adjustment to be on three, the release arm to be on four, and the fine adjustment to be dialed in about halfway so you have about one inch from the end of the block to the ball. Also, I have to use two stakes in the rear to make sure that the tail end doesn't swing one way or the other. All right, after uh, about a half hour in the field, I learned a couple things. First is that because there's no pitcher windup, the batter doesn't have the cues he needs to anticipate the throw. So that if you have this throwing it at 40 miles an hour or so on the pitcher's mound, he doesn't have enough time to react and get set properly. So what I found is to compensate by that, moving that back about 10 feet, 52 feet instead of 42 gives him just that fraction of a second longer so that he has enough cue to get into his batting windup and it seems to work much better. Also, while the side to side accuracy is very consistent within a few inches, up and down the pitches can vary by as much as plus or minus a foot and I think that's because of how fast the release arm is pulled back. You want to pull it back nice and slow, just like with shooting a, a, a rifle. You want to squeeze, not jerk. Okay, this is a demonstration of using the uh, 
Louisville Slugger Blue Flame Pitching Machine for grounders. Personally, I think it's a waste of time because accuracy is not so important. I find you can throw the ball much faster, much easier uh, just using your arm uh, than this machine can do. This is at the maximum power setting for this device, which by the way is the UPM45. Okay, I've now got it set for everything set for the highest possible high fly ball. And in this, I found it does not do a good job. Hi, I'm James, I am 10, and I've been playing baseball for one year, and, I'm, and I helped my grandpa test out the pitching machine. I think that if you're going into low league, or a high skill level low league, and they're going to be throwing balls really fast for you when you're batting, that it's a great, um, it's a great practice for if you're batting, because it helps you tell high or low balls really well. And, um, and it helps you also for a good ball, so you swing, it gets you a good swing, and I think it's just very good for um, batting. For the fielding, it's, um, I actually think it's better if the pitcher, I mean, if the coach uses a fungal bat to um, hit ground balls and fly balls to you, or if someone just throws them up or on the ground to you. But still, it's good for ground balls and two. If you're looking for a pitching machine that actually works, I'd say that this is a good one for you to go for.